Hello. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Reform My Mind, episode nine. Oh my God, you've done it. That's it. You've you saved me it. from I like, have. I know you should have just been, uh, which one is it, babe? Well, today we have got a really important episode, which we thought we'd just kick right off mm. because it's Mental Health Awareness Week next week. I know that's quite a big one, isn't it? I feel like a lot more people talk about it. Um, probably mostly because it's so on social media and everyone is talking about it. And I think it's important to encourage people that, you know, are struggling or to speak up. And it's it's a good opportunity for people to get help or just be heard yeah. if they have to or need to, yeah. you know, in, in these situations. But So next week has got a theme. So every year, Mental Health Awareness Week has a different theme. And this year's theme is movement. Mm. So moving more to improve your well-being, which is something that we both feel really strongly about because we both really struggled with maybe, you know, our well-being before we met. Yeah. Movement, exercise is what brought us together and what keeps us sane. (laughs) pretty much yeah (laughs) literally no but in all honesty if you think about it or when I'm going through something you know that's bothering me or stress or I'm having a hard time that's the first thing normally that you need to do is move your body and honestly I know that when I'm in in a dark time I don't want to go and exercise and smash the gym and be super like focus on one workout because sometimes you don't have the energy and you don't have that motivation first of all or discipline especially when you're going through a hard time discipline is probably one of the hardest to like conquer isn't it but um I just think movement is just so important and it plays differently for different people you know some people like to go and hit the gym and really really push themselves but some people just do not have the energy Mm -hmm. and in that case, having a walk, yeah, go outside if it is two minutes. I know a lot of people think, oh, what's the point getting outside for just two minutes? That's just a, too much of an effort. No, it's not. It's it literally that will help you even that tiny little bit that day. Just getting out for a couple of minutes so you not just isolating yourself on your own because I'm, yeah. I'm I'm guilty of that and you are so good with it you just go you, you need to get out it doesn't matter mm-hmm. even if you've got no makeup on or you feel like shit or you don't feel like actually walking out the door you just do it just yeah. go and do it for 10 minutes you'll feel much much better and you're always right like well <laughs> say that again <laughs> you're always right actually <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 well, you're right there in what you've just said. It's not necessarily about just getting out there and exercising. And in actual fact, when, that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Mm. We're not going to be advertising, you know, oh, everybody go and join a gym or get out there, go join an exercise class because we absolutely recognize that that sometimes just isn't possible for everybody. Or not achievable mm, yeah. either. And you might not be in the right frame of mind to be able to just get yourself up and out there. You know, you might have really difficult self-confidence issues or you might have had a bad experience in the gym. You might not feel like getting out of bed. And I think we're really today want to touch on those cycles where people feel alone and they don't feel like they can turn to anybody and they they feel like they're just sat with their feelings Mm -hmm. the last thing they want to do is exercise but we really want to to stress the importance of like you've just said just movement just moving for your body just getting out and about getting some sunlight if if we get some in this country but yeah well it's nice gorgeous today it is and we're stuck in here it's so nice outside guys honestly and and i know i'm going i'm diverting from the subject but i feel like i have to because last night whatever happened last night it was incredible and we like i've watched the most unbelievable sunset that we're very lucky around where we live we get stunning sunsets Mm -hmm. like pretty much half the year but i just feel like last night was just completely 
there was a different energy, wasn't there, in the air? Like, Just, I've never seen anything like it. And I actually wasn't aware of the Northern Lights. I I didn't know that they're going to happen. I know a lot of people knew now that obviously it's out there and yeah. everyone's taking pictures of them. But... I actually didn't know, and I remember just looking at my phone. I was just about to go to bed. Our girls' group chat was going crazy. Our girls' crazy. group chat from the former was going crazy. And was like, girls, you need to go and look outside. And I just went, what? And I literally just walked outside and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah, and the, the, they were on for a couple yeah, of hours. It was. I um, just think as well, thinking about the small things and appreciating the small things yeah. is so important. We both really love the sunset. We love the sunrise. Mm. It's just appreciating the small things in life, whatever they may be. Nature has such a powerful influence on us and can massively improve our, our well-being. Just it, it's in small doses. So we're not saying like, you know, get out there and change the world or do something drastically different. Mm. It's just little and often and just pushing yourself out of your comfort zone to, to move a little bit more. Well, yesterday, for example, I didn't feel like getting out. I didn't. And I was just like, no, I'm just staying in the garden. I don't want to show my face to the world. I'm just going to, that's it. That's me done for tonight. And do you know what? I'm actually so grateful that I did go. And it wasn't something extravagant I didn't have to get ready I literally just chucked some trackies on and mm-hmm. just went and watched the sunset and it made me feel so much better in every way really and you just never know who you bump into and who you have lovely conversations with like I had such a lovely conversation with this woman yesterday while we were watching the sunset me and my kids and you know, I wouldn't have been able to have that if I would have just been stuck in the house and mm-hmm. just refusing to show my face to the world. And I understand it's really hard because I go I go through stages like that all the time. But every time I make the decision to get out, I never regret it. I'm always mm-hmm. like super grateful that I've done it. And it's almost like it's just another reminder again that it's always the right thing to do is get outside even five minutes. Mm-hmm. That's, if that's all you can do, do five minutes and yeah. that's enough. And I think just focusing on, you know, just moving your body, even if it's just to kind of get up out of bed and go downstairs is so important. But mm. if you can do, you know, if you can get outside and even go in the shop where you connect with other people, yeah. I think that's so important. If somebody is really struggling with their mental health, you know, quite often it's easy to lock yourself away. And it's easy to just want to sit with your own thoughts and think, you know, I'll deal with this by myself. You might not have anybody that you feel that you can speak to. And, you know, we're not saying go and pour your heart out Mm. to a stranger. What we're saying is that those small moments of connection really kind of improve our overall well-being because, you know, as humans, we're all wired for connection. Our brains really thrive on interaction with other people Mm -hmm. and lots and lots of research studies have repeatedly shown that connection with other people is one of the most important foundations for positive well-being Mm -hmm. and on the flip side of that loneliness is one of the the biggest risk factors for poor mental health so if you are kind of locking yourself away you, you you double kind of dosing the risk factors for for poor mental health yeah but also you know sometimes like you said you might not feel like pouring your heart out to someone and that's fine it's not about that is it it's and you honestly sometimes me and Kay would just sit next to each other and just sit there and just literally just be in each well, other's we did presence. that yesterday, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, and I, you know, and it's, that's enough. Sometimes that's enough when you're not ready just yet to speak, speak about it. You could be really fragile emotionally. And I know when I can be like that, I mean, I can't get two words out before I start crying. So at, at, at moments like that, it's good to have someone that you can just go and sit with. Yeah. So you're not feeling lonely or all by yourself. Just someone just to be there and just have just random chats or that somebody that's actually okay to sit in silence yeah. with you as well and understands that. You know, you don't constantly have to just be having these conversations that keep rolling all the time you know 
sometimes you just need someone there. I think Literally. that as well is an important point for, you know, friends or family members mm. of somebody who is struggling with their mental health is that you don't have to be a, a therapist or offer, you know, a therapeutic conversation or unpick what's happening mm. for them or even feel the need to fix. I think quite a lot of people feel as though they have to fix. Yeah. And really what that is, is their uncomfortableness with mm. difficult feelings. So they feel as though they can't just have that silence or that validation of the other mm. person because it's uncomfortable for them to sit with. And so they offer solutions. Yeah, um, but I, I think that's just friends though in general, isn't it? I think, you know, we all get quite um, like obviously passionate and quite like trying to cocoon our friends and make sure that they're okay and protective but at the same time you've got to understand that you can't fix everything and you shouldn't actually try to fix it but what you can do is be there for them and just <clears throat> understand that they just need you to be there you know if if I would want some advice I would somehow ask for it in a way of like oh what do you think or this has happened or but sometimes you just want to just sit there and just be with your friend listen to some music have some snacks whatever it might be like for example for me and you was just sitting literally in the middle of the garden and just like existing basically yeah. that's what we did and there was just no expectations no like oh let's have this big chat or there was nothing and it was just pure bliss because mm -hmm. that's all I needed that day to you know be in your company but not feel like I have to you know make all these conversations when I actually genuinely couldn't mm -hmm. deep down because I was that exhausted so mm -hmm. I think that's again just something for anyone that's got friends and always feels a need that they they have to fix their situation or their problems. I just think sometimes taking a step back and just being there and listening to them is all you can do for them. And it's probably the best thing you can do for them. This reminds me of a lot about what I speak about when I explain kinds of mental health in the way of a, a seesaw. Mm. So if you imagine a seesaw and you'll always have risk factors on one side, so risk factors are different for everybody, but you could have, you know, you could have grown up in a, a home where you experienced, you know, poor parental mental health or, you know, a difficult parental style or, or even, you know, you just got difficult things going on in your relationships or you've had, you know, an experience of, of whatever it is, there's always risk factors, mm -hmm. you know, poverty is a huge risk factor not having access to, you know, nice outdoor spaces. There's risk factors all around us effectively. And you can try and mitigate some risk factors, but you can never remove them all. And so if yeah. we're thinking about this on a seesaw, those risk factors are a way the seesaw down towards poor mental health. And what we need to be thinking of doing is balancing it out with protective factors and the protective factors are just those positive experiences so rather focusing on on the fixing you know let's fix the problem let's fix the negative ones just focus on building up the other side so that the seesaw gradually comes up and it tips towards the positive way mm. and I think when you you imagine your mental health in that way it becomes so much more manageable and it gives you a purpose so you know, you're not constantly thinking, well, I'm never going to change this situation. I can't see a way out. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be fixed. I've, you know, experienced something or I've done something or somebody's done something to me and that's the end. Well, it's not because the seesaw is still out of balance. So positive protective factors are relationships with other people, your friendships, mm -hmm. your connection, you know, getting out there and moving, exercise, pets can be a massive protective factor. Oh, you I know, think that's massive for people. Hundred yeah, percent. Things like positive coping strategies, that is so, so important mm -hmm. as a protective factor. If you know that you've got unhealthy coping strategies, that is a risk factor for you. That so that is something that you can change. 
mm-hmm. into, you know, okay, well, I know that a coping strategy for me might be, and I'm speaking hypothetically here, but, you know, might be hiding away, like you said, that is going to tip the the seesaw more towards a negative yeah. factor. So it's unhealthy. So what could you do to help it flip it into a more protective coping strategy? Yeah, I mean, God, I mean, the amount of times I, um, this made me think about, you know, how everyone says, like, be positive, have a positive mindset and try and start your day with a positive mind. And I, you know what, I think that's great, but it doesn't always work like that. And you will have days where I've experienced this recently, where I would make myself be positive, like, like, I would be like, nope, today is not the day. I'm not doing all of that negativity and, you know, worrying about everything. And I'm just going to go and, like, you know, thrive and just get on with the day. And what I've noticed that when the more I force myself to do it to the extreme, I'm not saying, like, you know, I'm not saying to myself that I'm trying to be positive. But when I'm forcing myself too much, that's when I crack. With that your day. mask and your true emotions. I literally, like, any time I've tried my best to be my strongest that day, I literally cracked the worst. And you, and then you just think, where's where is all this coming from? Like, why, what, how come? Like, you know, I've started my day on such a positive note. I've done all of these things. You know, I've kept busy. I've done this and that. And then and now I'm just like in a position where I don't know where all of these emotions have just come from, like out of nowhere, because I've not even thought about them once today. I just think that sometimes, like we always say small steps, and there's there's a reason why we say small steps, because, you know, it, it literally, when you go to the other extreme, it can also be really harmful for you. So I know we're all trying to fix things really quickly and do the dramatic change, but it doesn't work like that on the long in the long run. It only works for a short period of time. Yeah. Like it worked for me for the morning or, you know, for the half a day. And then as soon as you slow down and, you know, you do something that's not as you're not as focused on, that's when it all creeps back up. So I just think small steps, watch your emotions that day when you wake up. If you're a little bit more fragile, maybe that day don't just go, you know, screaming at yourself that you have to be positive. Maybe just say, do you know what, today I'll try and be more yeah. positive and see how I get on rather than put pressure on yourself. I think as well, social media has got such a huge part to mm-hmm. play in that because there's a lot of this this kind of positive, you know, glass half full, let's, you know, project this image of ourselves. And like you say, that can be really harmful to your well-being because all you're doing is just pushing those emotions under a rug temporarily. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it might be that you, you don't think about them, but our thoughts and our, our emotions are actually separate And our emotions are are really driven massively by our biology, so our fight or flight system. And if we get up and, you know, we're not feeling great or we're under a huge amount of stress and we put on a brave face and, you know, we're telling ourselves that everything's okay, what in actual fact is happening in our body on on the surface level, you know, we might have all of these great things. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm just going to get out. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to move. But inside you've got all of those stress hormones still flooding your body, yeah. keeping your body on, on high alert so that the smallest trigger will just set you off and, and make you come all flooding out. And that's the, the kind of unique thing of, about our fight or flight system is that we're quite often not aware of the triggers the the mm. unseen in our environment it, it it could be anything it could be a smell it could be you know just something yeah. it literally when we say small. it comes out of nowhere it literally feels like it just came yeah. it just came over you and you just think well I was just doing great two minutes ago like what the hell's just happened to me yeah. but it it literally I think that's the most important the more you try and hide your emotions you know, thought thought patterns and how you're thinking about things, you can 
easily i think change you can modify them a little bit better but how you truly feel about something deep down can affect you way much more and i think that if you're not recognizing that that's where all the problems come to the surface and that's where it all just becomes too much and overwhelming when they do hit you out of nowhere because you've tried to make yourself busy and try to you know mask it and so greatly if you think about it I mean the amount of times we do that we go outside and you know there, there was actually a trend um I think it was last year or or maybe this year if I'm maybe I'm not maybe I'm not right but last year I think definitely there was a trend going around on Instagram saying post a picture at your lowest mm. and it do you know what for me it was kind of a a good way of seeing people how they mask things because they're all smiling and they're all having the best time in the picture but they only knew deep down how low they were at the time but nobody else knew and I think that's kind of just shows you the pro like how it all works isn't it like you just go out there and you put the bravest face and you just get on with it but are you actually dealing with it you know like are you doing all the steps necessary to not mask it too much maybe to the point that you're not able to be your authentic self or say to someone no I'm actually having a really shit time mm -hmm. but I, I'm smiling but I'm having a really bad time and I don't know how to tell you because a lot of people will turn around and be like oh oh really oh I, di I couldn't tell you know and you just think yeah because I, yeah because I'm masking it really well you so know why why do you think that people do that I genuinely think and I, I'm really strong on this I think people are scared to be judged I think that's the biggest one for me and I think you know it it's a sad reality a sad world that we live in at the moment that people feel like they I'm trying not to be like too um too like forward here opinionated <laughs> yeah not too cutthroat but I just think people just have too many opinions like that's where I'm trying to get and I just think sometimes you need to just keep them for yourself and look at the bigger picture and realize that even although you think that that person's done something you're also not perfect either and I think if you take that approach in life it will get you way much further than you think and will make people feel less judged because you know if you see someone that's having a bad time or you've seen the couple of time that the the the, the, the low or something oh she's always whining about this or she's always saying this that's none of your business you don't know what's happening inside of them and how they're feeling I think what you can do is just be like do you know what just be encouraging rather than judgmental and I think that's the biggest thing people do not want to be judged and are embarrassed if they are judged and then they just hide and yeah. then they don't want to speak to anyone about it why would they when every interaction that probably they've had with someone they felt judged yeah and I also think a big one for people is not fully understanding their own emotions so maybe yeah. they've gone through life where nobody's ever spoken about their emotions and they've always put on a brave face or been told you know put, you know just get on with it basically we don't talk about that mm. type of stuff and then that becomes really difficult when you're faced with these negative emotions that you don't really have a name for and you know, negative emotions are normal. They're a normal part of being human. Everybody has them. And being able to, to name them and manage them is a huge, important life skill. And I yeah. think it's so important to explore the range of emotions. So you might be feeling really anxious, but underneath that layer of anxiety it's attached to to shame so you know something may have happened where you know you were embarrassed or you were called out for something yeah. and and that's left this kind of deep rooted fear of ever you know doing that that again for example when if we just look at it from a surface level 
you might just feel all these emotions of anxiety and feel worried and not really truly understand where it's coming from and yeah. you can only move past those emotions when you really get to the bottom of of where they're coming from yeah and I also think honestly I just think sometimes having a different approach how you approach people and and, and on a daily basis we're talking every single day here and I've noticed a big massive shift in my life when I've started approaching um, situations on a daily basis on a completely different level that I have ever ever done before and do you know what more people are more they're actually willing to speak to you if you approach them with your open arms and I'm not saying walk around the street with your open arms I'm saying you know, just be more inviting and be more, you know, just have a good vibe about you in a way of that they are welcome to come in your space it's to speak kindness, to It's kindness, isn't it? It's being kind. Yeah. I feel a non-judgmental. Mm. That can be really difficult, kind of, if you've been hurt. You don't want to put yourself out there and you close yourself off. But like you've just said, in actual fact, just by practicing that in small doses mm-hmm. daily, it's amazing actually what you get back from other people who might also have those walls up. Exactly. But just showing that, that little tiny bit of vulnerability, you're not exposing yourself, you're yeah. not giving anything of yourself away. You're just showing a little bit of compassion to somebody else. And you know what? It just works. It really does, honestly. And I've been put in situations where this has happened many, many times, especially recently. And I've just been... Do you know what? That is just amazing. I honestly, and it just makes, it changed my perspective on everything completely. How, you know, people are actually really nice, kind, genuine people when you approach them in a, in the same way and feel seen. Treat others how you You wish to be treated. That's just coming to my mind. That is literally like, well, I mean, you couldn't, that's music to my Mm. ear. Like you can't be treating someone in a way that you would never accept from someone else. And I think that's just the reality of things. Mm -hmm. If you want people to be kind to you, then you're going to have to be kind to people and kind of show that type of gratitude back in the mm-hmm. way of like, well, you live by this every day. You know, you're not just saying it, you're actually doing it. So that over time will show up in such a positive way in your life that you won't know any different. Yeah. And that's how you're going to show up then. I am thinking now of those people who may be quite judgmental quite reserved quite you know held back in living in their own bubble you know maybe they're surrounded by people who have similar opinions and that's just the kind of the way of being that that's the norm oh, yeah so in that situation you know you, you have to stop and think well, hang on a minute, you know, I've got this thought, I, immediately it goes to judgment about somebody else. Why is that? Mm. And it's about stopping and thinking, is that judgment actually tapping into a fear of mine that I've got about myself? Yeah. You know, maybe it, it's a self-esteem issue. Maybe it's rooted to a fear of something maybe it's rooted to how you were treated when you know you were younger never feeling quite good enough you can only change you can only go through true growth and acceptance when you start to turn your gaze inwardly and yeah. and think about what lies beneath these thought processes yeah oh god you see have you ever put been put in positions where I just feel like I've experienced a lot of this and I think that's just like over time with growth you realize this where you spend time with people that just gossip they don't do anything else that they literally don't do anything else any conversation it goes from what this do what that do oh my god did you see that oh my god oh my how dare they oh my it all flips from one to another like don't get me wrong we all have a little gossip now and then oh, have you seen this and that? Mm. But 
the conversation doesn't just go like from one to another and you just think half the time you're sitting there and you, they're just speaking about other people they're not even actually speaking about themselves or about what what they're going to be doing or what memories they've got together or whatever they're actually spending time of their own time speaking about others and judging mm. others and I think I've recognized that quite early on and I just said I just feel really uncomfortable when this happens and it's this like really like like warm feeling that takes over my body it almost I think it's like you know almost like I'm infuriated a little bit because I'm just like what what are we doing why are we sitting here talking about everyone else but ourselves Mm -hmm. like seriously like this there's got to be a better way of communicating you know when you go out Mm -hmm. with someone also it's kind of a trigger for me and that's obviously this is from my past experiences if they do that while I'm there. Oh, well, you know what they're going to be talking about when you well, leave the room. Well, I tell you room. what, when I'm, that, when I'm out that door, I know exactly what's happening. My ears are burning. Yeah, it's literally, <laughs> I can feel it already from the back of me. You feel that rusty knife in your back. <laughs> and you just think, if you're happy to spend hours at dinner table talking about yeah. everyone else, God help us I all. I mean, look, I'd love to spend hours and hours unpicking that and where all that behavior comes from from but I think what's more important is kind of acknowledging the crowd that you're with and the people that you spend your time with because you absorb your environment so who and you know there's that age-old saying isn't there like what is it the five people that you surround yourself with take a look at them that's kind of who you are or who you become yeah and it's so true in the sense that we really, we really model from our environment. So we we pick up on social cues, but we respond to triggers and it becomes our day to day. So forget about focusing on, on the negative people or even trying to change toxic people. I think for me, my biggest growth came when I just acknowledged actually what I can control is is me and in my circle. And I just remove myself from those types of situations. Yeah. And yes, you might, you know, be called rude or you might be spoken about or you might be judged or, you know, called whatever. But you know what? Who cares? Because actually what you're doing is you're keeping your own peace. Yeah. And you're becoming a better person by choosing who you spend your time with yeah I think that's massive I I I think the growth for me that's when it happened when I decided you know what I don't have to give my opinion on someone that I don't know that you are talking about like I because that's where it all kicked in for me why am I asked questions about somebody that I personally don't know just because you're talking about them? And I just thought, I can't. I can't have an opinion on this person because I don't know them and I don't know enough about the problem, the issue, the whatever the subject was. And I just kept feeling pressurized to answer something or give my opinion when I really didn't want to because I didn't really know that person well enough. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when I just realized, right, (laughs) you know, in situations like that, you just need to take a step back and just say, listen, this just doesn't serve me at all. If anything, it puts me in a position where I'm really uncomfortable and I'm having to then go to that person and say, I don't really want to talk about it because it's just, I just don't relate to it whatsoever. And you just need to have in a way the confidence to be able to come forward like that and say, well, I'm I'm sorry, you know, you know, you're not done anything bad or malicious, but we just don't resonate at all anymore. And I just don't feel my 100% self when I'm around these type of people. So I think that's all you can do. I think that's so important. I mean, we talk about being our authentic self all the time, yeah. but it's it, it's not just a, a kind of a fad or a saying, because when you're not living authentically, mm. that that really impacts your well-being because yeah. what you're doing is you, you're trying to people please or you're trying to fit in or you've constantly got that that negativity or those triggers around you mm. that, you know, 
just aren't serving you and I think taking control of removing yourself out the situation it it's an important part of just putting your boundaries in place and protecting yourself but it will help you in the long it, it term. will help help you in the way of like well the more you put yourself in that uncomfortable position where you know you're not your authentic self then you're just gonna dig yourself up a bigger hole every time you are putting yourself in that situation so I think you might as well just be honest yeah and acknowledge that you're not actually 100% okay when you're around these people and yeah do you know what it actually might hurt a lot because you might have spent an awful lot of time with these people and like them and have a lot of love for them but you realize that just something there makes me really uncomfortable every time we spend time together Mm. and it's a really hard thing to acknowledge and I completely understand it doesn't you know you don't just wake up and be like oh you know whatever because it doesn't work like that you're always going to think about it you spend an awful lot of time with these people so I think you know, be honest with yourself, take time to sit back and analyze in a certain way how you've been feeling all of these times and see where to go from there and what changes you can make. So for the next time, you don't have to go through that uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. That, you know. And that's the thing, you, you don't have to. That's no. the case. So you're putting yourself in that situation mm. at the end of the day. You can, like you said, you can physically change that yeah. you're in control of changing that aspect mm-hmm. of your life why would you like why would you not do it if it makes you feel really really like mm-hmm. uncomfortable so back to movement because we back always go movement. off on a tangent i know sorry <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> sorry everyone but you know we don't actually plan for our episodes maybe we should do a little bit more but i think that's the beauty of what we talk about it's so yeah. off the cuff yeah and when we kind of thought about making this podcast it was just a, a conversation between two best friends which is actually what you're getting now so yeah. i just don't i just never ever wanted to just feel like it's rehearsed or, or like scripted. I just don't think I just think it's it just takes the whole point out of it like you know hello everybody today we are on before my mind can you imagine like no I can't even I'd be laughing at you the whole time I'd be like what are you doing about (laughs) movement yeah we're moving today (laughs) we're making moves we're (laughs) running to the fridge (laughs) (laughs) I made myself about five coffees (laughs) no but in all honesty I think movement I mean we can both relate to this I think personally I've I've always been quite a um <laughs> oh my god Some, something's after K something's after K okay <laughs> <laughs> she's literally doing this it's like she's literally grabbing nothing <laughs> I did see that, but I don't know. Do, it's not a fly, you know. Is it, is it, what, what do you mean it's not a fly? I don't know. Something. What the hell is it? <laughs> I think it's something's way more smaller. Anyway, it's not It's not there, is it? <laughs> is it in your hair? No, 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 no. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. I can't see it. If it's not a spider. I can't wrong. see it. It might have been a tiny little baby spider that's just lingering around. What, that's going to lay eggs in the uh, hair? <laughs> lay eggs in my hair that's not what you want spider eggs in your hair do you know what i'm just gonna get a snake out next time and be like if you never want to see me again (laughs) then yeah there you you go be my guest (laughs) well do you know what well my daughter did that the other day in your your house at your house i was chilling wanted to say nothing and not speak to anyone she puts a snake around my neck that she found in your garden yeah. not a real one by the way guys no, no, it's a, a toy one. snake but it was a bloody real oh. looking one <laughs> we've done it again i know but back there there is there is there is there is is it a feather no it's it's is it a spider no it's fine oh. no it's gone dad she's right sake. right <laughs> <laughs> okay back to movement because we've done it again so movement why is it so important well well <laughs> well more importantly it, it gets your juices flowing to your brain <laughs> oh my god i'm 
I'm sorry. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, God, you oh, we've lost it now. No, juice. <laughs> right, guys. But getting your juices flowing. <laughs> oh, shit, oh, honestly, God. carry on, babe. Carry on, carry on. Sorry, sorry. That's just me, just my oh, dirty mind. I feel like I've got to get kicked in. in. I feel like I've got to get like super scientific now, just like redeem myself. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> well, actually, it lubricates. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's getting worse. You know, you just think it can't get worse, and then it does. And this is exactly why our conversations oh. half the times are like it literally goes from one thing to another, and then it just goes. Oh, well, at this point, we're just absolutely <laughs> making a fool of ourselves. Right. It releases endorphins. There, there you we go. go. There we go. Exercise releases endorphins, but also so does moving your body as well. So back. Back, back to composure. Different type of movement <laughs> back all to, the time. Back to composure. So if you're not feeling great, okay, what we're saying is movement matters is the theme for next week's Mental Health Awareness Week mm. with the idea being that even the smallest bit of movement in your day can really help shift that kind of, you know, seesaw. Yeah, yeah, I have totally lost it now. But... <laughs> it's it's all the bloody juices oh, are flowing around. That's why. <laughs> so we're tipping the balance. We are mending little bit by little bit. Yeah, just again, baby steps. I mean, yeah. you know, with what we always go back to, it's really important. Like for me. I mean, I know, obviously, I know that we met at Reformer and we, we're in the same kind of situation how, honestly, I know that it's probably all over our Instagram and everything, but we I just can't stress enough how Reformer, it's changed my life. Like, and I, I don't want to just be that person that just is dramatic about yeah. it. But in all honesty, I just feel like as soon as I've started going, it was a game changer for me. Everything changed for me in every way. Obviously, we're super lucky to have such a group of like amazing women that are so supportive and not judgmental whatsoever. And um, I think that helps in situations depending on where you are in your life and what you're mm -hmm. dealing with and what you're going through. And it was just a different type of movement for me. Again, like, you know, I've always been quite sporty and I've never not not exercised. You know, I was a runner when I was really little. I've always been involved in sports and things like that. And for me, this was a completely different movement I've never, ever tried before. I was that type of person that could not sit through one hour yoga. I couldn't do it. My brain couldn't switch off. I could. I yeah. literally. I don't even think right now I can. I mean, I mean, I'm a bit better at it, but I don't think I could just sit there in silence for an hour and just stretch. Or there's no way I could see focus. you sitting in I, silence I can't. for an hour. Either. I can't do it. I mean, I would have to <laughs> some sort of make some sort of noise just to break the awkward silence of just <laughs> thinking. Oh, sitting with awkward silences. Oh yeah. I no. No, I, I'm not that person. I will not be sitting with you in awkward silence. I'll be doing something stupid just to break that silence. <laughs> we, we know, we know. We know what happens in, in the studio in Reformer, don't we? As soon as it's too quiet, I'm like, is, is everyone feeling this? Or what you're all so quiet for? But no, in all honesty, I think that, for me, game changer. Do something maybe that is different Maybe you're used to a sport mm -hmm. and it works great for you. Don't stop doing it, but maybe try different types of approach. Approach yeah. a different type of movement that challenges you in a way, but at the same time, it gives you a different perspective yeah. on movement and exercise. I think as well, baby steps. So, you know, if you can't face going to a class or meeting people, yeah. you know, get out for a walk. Go, go for a walk in your lunchtime, you know, think of all of, you know, a lot of the excuses that you make for yourself are, I don't have time, you know, I'm so busy, and, and that's so true. The weather's you know? shit. Yeah, oh my god, that's a big one, isn't it? But <laughs> we can both really resonate with that, look, I, I work full time, I've got two children, you know, I've got a really busy house, I've got the podcast, it, it's, however, I 
wake up earlier so that I can have that time to myself yeah. because I know how important it is for me to to have that movement that well-being that exercise yeah it's without it you can massively feel yourself going downhill well think about it if you've not exercised like obviously situations happen in your life and life can sometimes you know be too busy and we get it sometimes you can't and I've, I've been in a situation where I've not worked out for a week or two and I just think the difference that it makes mm-hmm. honestly it's it's actually quite shocking because you just think why am I why am I feeling like this mm. why, why am I so unsettled why is my anxiety through the roof again why and you just think oh mm, well I've not worked you out for two out. weeks and it just shows you how when you got yourself in that routine managing something that helps you and then you all of a sudden don't do it how what an effect it has yeah. on you and it's that big it, it's huge there's there's so many positives as I was thinking then when you were speaking you know not just the elements of getting out and moving your body but that connection with people how important it is to have those conversations or meeting new people or yeah. surrounding yourself in the case of reformer for example with like-minded people who want the same things as you who have the same outlook on life as you particularly if you're in a situation that you've just described earlier that you've actually recognized that those around you aren't particularly aligned with your values then it's up to you to be able to go out there start a hobby what you're really interested in it doesn't have to be you know exercise as as vigorous as a class you know, there's yeah. lots of walking groups, for example, that you can join or even, you know, go in the, for a swim or yeah. to your local park or even, you know, just kind of getting out and about and mm. getting some fresh air, even if it's just for five minutes. Or maybe just think what makes me feel good. Yeah. As in like what triggers those endorphins? Mm-hmm. Like what is it that I really, really, really enjoy doing? Yeah. Like for me, it's watching the sunset. Yeah. I, can't, I can't tell you, I would rather do that every night than anything else. Yeah. Like I know for a fact that, that it's my thing. That's what, whatever mood I'm in, even if I'm happy, even if I'm sad or stressed or whatever it could be, I know that if I show up and watch the sunset, I'll feel better. So I think you just have to recognize what makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it drawing? Is it listening to music? Is it taking a walk? Drawing classes, pottery classes, anything. Anything. And if you can walk to those classes, even better. You know, go, go for a coffee with a friend, you know, just try and get that connection and I think another important thing what I was thinking about is is routine as well so having an element of structure and routine is so important because for me that Mm. is one I am super I'm not super organized but I'm super rigid in terms of routine and structure and when I don't have that I feel all all over the place. Lost, I feel honest. lost. Yeah. I do feel lost. And it's something to, to anchor us to. Um, you know, we are kind of creatures of habit. That's an old saying, but it's such an important saying because the safety in predictability. So when you know what's going to happen and you can predict, you know, your day, you feel more in control of the situation. Yeah. So if you find yourself that you are feeling really low, you're shutting yourself away, make a little plan for yourself yeah. and then try and stick to it because also you'll get that sense of achievement that it doesn't have to be a big plan, no. guys. Come on. We're not we're not talking about go and fill your day to the point that you, at yeah. the end of the day you'll be so exhausted that your anxiety will be through the roof. Just again. getting a shower, getting yeah. up. Okay, today I'm gonna wash my hair. You know, that, that's a big task for, for ladies. I mean, she's um, and takes... potentially some men, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just washing your hair, you know, mm. set yourself small achievable goals is so Do you important. know what it's funny you said that because washing my hair always helps me always makes you feel better and not but to the point that i literally like show up in a different way yeah. i don't know what it is <laughs> You're like hi 
I mean, I, probably because half of my body is just hair. <laughs> and it's just like, uh, hello. <laughs> you see me and it's just like literally just like blobs of hair everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> It's like there she oh, is. is. Too there, much info there. There she go is. Go and get a wax. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's like, can you imagine? Like you're just <laughs> feeling shit about your hair that day, and you're just like, oh hello. <laughs> it's my greasy natural oiled oh. hair. <laughs> God. But so, no, yeah. honestly, just little things <clears throat> that make you feel better. Uh, doing a face mask. So I don't know. Like, I mean. Even for, I'm just thinking for both men and women as well, because obviously, like, men were probably just thinking about DL, I'm not going to do a face mask, but, you know, that might help, but <laughs> it's just <laughs> depending on the situation, but it, I just think that just think of what, what's your safety, what is your comfort, and, but then again, we go into the other side of that, which means, like, obviously, you can, you know, comfort food like you can go into like it can be anything like a lot of people turn around and be like yeah but I enjoy having a glass of wine or I enjoy going for a drink or having a few drinks yeah we all do but I think there's you have to see what is there a benefit benefit from that is that going to actually help Mm -hmm. you tomorrow or the day after because we all you know go through stages where it's just super easy just to go or stay in and just have a drink rather than go for a walk or you know a night time in the evening just sit in front of the telly and just drink wine and have snacks instead of making the effort to maybe go outside and do that 10, 15 minute walk, you know, and it's difficult because we all go through them stages. And I mean, you you don't feel like doing it when when you, we can both resonate when you're in that space, you just don't feel like it, but it's what you've just said. It's actually recognizing if you feel worse after sitting on the couch, you know, and having a bottle of wine and you know or a few beers and opening a chocolate bar and yeah it might feel good at the time but oh yeah because your endorphins are going through and it's a quick fix I mean I suppose that goes into you know addictions you know like obviously I'm not I'm I'm not as educated in it like obviously I know about addictions and how it plays out but I just feel like it's it's a really tough thing and we all have struggled with addiction in one way or another you know it can be anything from smoking drinking too much alcohol every week or something it can just be you know something that you never really think as it's you know, everyone, I don't, I don't even know if I can. I mean, I can, I suppose, because I mentioned the word drugs, can I? I suppose it's one of the things everyone mm. talks about them. It doesn't have to be dramatic. An addiction doesn't have to be like, oh my God, you've got to be, you're doing all of these things. It can be literally the small things that you constantly do. Yeah, like your phone. All the time. I, I, I think people's phones are a huge addiction that they don't really recognize do you know what i've done and this is this is a thing and i actually i've I've noticed getting really pissed off a couple of days ago when this has happened to me i now try not to pick up my phone when i'm having a conversation with someone Mm. so if i'm in someone's presence i literally try not to look at it especially if they're talking i feel like I hate that aspect mm. if somebody does that to me, so I stop doing it. I'm gonna try that. No, honestly, it's so it's so good because what I've noticed now, whenever somebody does that to me, I'm just like I've clocked it straight mm. away because I'm sitting there with my hands literally like this with no phone in my hands. I'm like, well, you're in my presence. Why, you know? Yeah. And it's so obvious when you stop doing it how much people do it so this is gonna be a big thing for me because i like a little massively task. yeah, yeah. I, I will hold my hands up i am awful on my phone oh i did that oh no yeah, don't worry i, I was terrible on it i was the same yeah. and i've noticed that you sit there with people that you could have in a lovely conversation with and have a you know good time with mm-hmm. and you'll one day look back and wish you had more time with them type of you know with them people that you love appreciate enjoy their time why waste it looking at a screen look at that damn screen when you're on your own and you're not surrounded by people and I just think it's a good little change that I've done in my routine the way I've you know approached 
yeah the situation definitely. and it really <clears throat> helps it really helps and it made other people aware of it as well when I've said hello you know we're here like together yeah. like what are you doing I, I understand if you have to take a phone call you something important work family kids I mean come on we get it but I just feel like a lot of people just sit there just on their phones mm. ignoring each other I, you've just got me thinking then I, you mentioned something and I thought it's such an important point it is time so it, it's you know we don't get time back and I feel as though we're all so busy and so just wrapped up in life and you know just doing what we've always done and if we just do what we've always done and we're not happy, how can we ever expect ourselves to be happy if you're yeah. not making any changes to that situation? Yeah, hundred percent. And I think I totally agree with that. And I think also, like you said, you can't get that time back. Unfortunately, you know, it's it, it, time goes really quick, and I think it it kind of hits you more when you have children. I mean, it always is always been that, oh my God, where's all this time gone? And then you have children and then it really hits you and you just think, wow, time does really, really fly. And, you know, you wake up one day and you just think, my daughter's 10. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, I've got a 10 year old. I, I don't understand where's all that gone. It, and it goes so And it goes quickly. so quickly and it, it you know, and it was all in my 20s as well. And it, I just look back at it and think, wow, it just literally, it made me just want to be more present with the people in my yeah. life and realize that one day when I'm older, I would always wish I had more time. Yeah. So I think, you know, you always hear people talk about these situations when they're a bit older and say, oh, just all I wish I had is just more time. Yeah. That's it. And that's all it is because at the end of the day is happy times with your loved ones, you know, with your friends. You build all of the memories and everything mm. that will stay with you forever. I'm just thinking of kind of, you know, when you were saying about your 20s and things like that, a lot of people fall into this pattern and in fact the vast majority of people fall into a pattern of you know being around people or being in situations that they're just in because they've fallen into them or you know they however they've got into them they just stay in them because mm. they feel as though that's who they are or that's the type of people that, you know, they surround themselves with and it's always been that way and it feels comfortable. But then you suddenly get to a point where you realize, actually, is this me? Is, are these people truly aligned with who I am? And that's not to say that you're kind of you're changing or you know you you rapidly kind of well, well you are changing. you are you're growing I suppose yeah. aren't you but quite a lot of people would see that in a negative way particularly the people that you're not leaving behind but with that period of growth I feel not a lot of people actually can can sit with it and understand how important it is as a person to go through that in order to protect your well-being also appreciating it yeah i just think like you know i think if you if you look at your friend and you see them growing in a positive way if you can't be happy for them for the changes that they're making that you know deep down that should have been made anyway but you're kind of just like stayed in your comfort zone i mean you know at that point you just think maybe you need to look inwards if yeah. you can't be happy for that person that they are evolving and making these positive changes mm. then I think that's the only question left is why am I not happy for them is there something that I'm not dealing with that I should be dealing with oh yeah a hundred percent yeah because it's you know we all sit in that comfort zone and it's great and it's nice and it's comforting and it's warm and you know mm. you're just safe but you know, sometimes you have to look back and just think, well, is this me actually? Mm. Or am I just doing it because everyone else is doing it? Yeah, or because I'm just used to it and it's the norm. Yeah, I don't know anything any different. Yeah, or I've got myself in a in a situation where actually I feel like I'm just gonna stay here because it might not be making me happy, but it's easier to stay 
than potentially you know mm. rock the boat but growth is uncomfortable and that's you know, what people don't get yeah. do you know i feel like a lot of people don't know that i think people think that growth is this like big massive positive amazing feeling no it's bloody painful it's and it's really really difficult and you just think if you think that you're growing and it's going to be easy then you're not growing no you're literally not you're not actually making the changes that should be made because it's too comfortable yeah and I feel like a lot of people just take this approach in growth as in being an easy it should be an easy ride it really isn't it's probably the worst and the hardest ride you'll ever have uh I I do you know what I love that it is because you've all got uh everybody's got a, a ceiling as such and if you just stay within your comfort zone you, you'll only ever reach the top of your ceiling mm-hmm. now whatever's holding you back from going beyond that ceiling is is something that you have to deal with and you have to challenge if that's a person if it's you know historical issues that you've been through if it's a self-confidence thing mm. they're all difficult things to tackle and if you don't tackle them you'll always be be stuck within that boundary if you want to progress if you want to achieve and we're not even talking about you know yeah. financial gain no, at no, all no. It, it's it's that element of peace and that element of actually being happy mm-hmm. living authentically then you've got to really re-examine those difficult things that that are keeping you weighed down I know honestly it just I, I just sometimes just think that uh, you go through these stages in your life and these hardships and you know traumas you know everything has a purpose in your life and it gets you where you should be going if you take the steps that the hard steps you know that you would not want to approach as willingly you know just trying to you know like let's just go through life and make it easy but I think sometimes staying too comfortable in one place can be really really detrimental and I think people just need to have a bit more self-awareness and, you know, constantly having to remind yourself that. Check in with yourself now and then. Don't leave yourself too long. Make sure you have those often check-ins with you. See mm. how I'm feeling, how I'm doing emotionally, you know, yeah. physically, everything, what's happening. And I always think whenever I'm going through some sort of anxiety or a, like a panic attack or something, I always think of like, where am I feeling it? Is it what's happening in my body? I need to be aware. Is it my stomach? Is it my in my chest? Is it where is it? And you need to just acknowledge all of these little things, mm-hmm. triggers in your body and see how to deal with them in the future, basically. Yeah. Or, you know, kind of think about like you've just said, focus on those body sensations because our mind and our body is so connected they're like, telling they're, you exactly what in, you're dealing with they're entwined yeah so if, for example if you're having a panic attack focusing on where you're feeling that if it's your tummy if it's your breathing it instantly connects you to mm. the emotion and enables you to to ride that wave so you know you're thinking okay my heart's racing. I'm just going to take some really deep breaths. And yeah. by focusing on that, you're giving yourself time for that emotion to pass. And yeah. they do pass. They do. And it's like it's like the same with phobias as well. I feel like I have, I mean, I've got my phobias that I just, like, honestly, like, when it comes over me, I'm just like, whoa, this is a different, because it just switches like that. But again, like you said, I'm acknowledging the emotion, everything that's happening in my body, I'm aware of it. I'm not pushing it out anymore. I'm not like going, oh, no, 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 it's happening. I'm like, it's happening. I'm taking a completely different approach. I know it's happening. It will happen. I just need to just know how to deal with it and how to approach it rather Mm -hmm. than panic and think that this is the worst thing that's going to happen. And I just think also making people aware if you do have phobias, I, that helps me all the time. Whenever I go into hospitals, I've got like a big, massive phobia of needles. I can't stand them. It's a thing that's always been in my life since I was a very, very young child. But I make everyone aware. 
because that helps me to deal with it when well, it's happening. It, you're acknowledging yeah. the problem. It doesn't become the elephant in the exactly. room. Exactly. I go in a room and say, right, you're going to have to lie me down for this because I've got this problem and this is this is it. You know, I'm making you aware. Because a lot of people, you know, when you do go through things like that or have phobias, they don't know, like, I, I remember the first time I fainted because I, I was getting an, an injection or blood test. It literally... They didn't know how to react. They thought I had a reaction to it or like, because I just literally flopped. Mm. I just passed out straight away. And I think like we can take this example for anything in life, acknowledge it, let people know. Mm -hmm. And everything else then in your head is much clearer. I'm not panicking that they don't know about this, you know, phobias, how I'm feeling. It can be play into everything. And there's less factors for you in your head to overthink mm -hmm. so it, it kind of gives you a bit of a cleaner like and I think you know. tying it back into our movement that really kind of pulls it all together because movement moving our body allows us that space to be able to acknowledge what we're feeling we don't have to kind of you know go through anything or, or try and manage it or anything like that but it gives us that space yeah. which is what you've just said to be able to to let it pass you know ride the wave but also it encourages those those feel-good hormones those endorphins you know it might activate our a, a branch of our nervous system which is responsible for for peace and rest and the release of those protective mm hormones rather than the stress ones which yeah. when we're thinking about negative things or we're having those difficult emotions our fight or flight system is constantly triggering that release of that the cortisol that adrenaline those things that in large doses can be harmful to our physical health so just just by moving more it helps the body and the brain flush out those toxic chemicals and yeah. and gets everything moving a little bit more and and that can be achieved with just a five minute walk in fresh air again we're coming back another reminder baby steps guys baby baby steps it doesn't have to be big do your best to do everything little every day mm -hmm. that will help you in one way or another and i think you know that is the most important thing that you can do for yourself that you'll benefit you know yeah in the long run and we're gonna try and be motivational this week because we're gonna try and share some snippets of us yeah. getting out there moving it doesn't come mm -hmm. easy at all yeah. we've you know we're, we all acknowledge that but hopefully we can encourage a little bit more movement in everybody else i know and i hope that everyone is kinder to themselves yeah. for next week especially i feel like there's a lot of tension around when it, whenever it's mental health week. I feel like there's a lot that comes out, mm. which is great. And I think that it, it gives people a chance to speak up. It gives people a chance to feel seen. And I just think that if you can take anything from this episode, just be kinder to everyone yeah. and listen. Yeah. Just listen more. It's not about being tokenistic. And no. if you're really struggling with your mental health, quite often these weeks can can feel really patronizing. Yeah, you know, or really heavy. Really heavy or really difficult. And it, it's important that in actual fact, you know where to seek help if you need it. Yeah. I mean, it's great that we can talk about it so openly, but ultimately there's going to be people out there who are really struggling and it's important that they reach out to somebody and we'll pop some kind of links onto our page yeah, of places where people can access help but do 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 if you're struggling particularly next week with what's going on then yeah reach out to somebody and yeah that brings us down to the end of the, the episode well hopefully everybody's enjoying the sunshine we're gonna go and have a lovely barbecue now yep can't wait to have some meat. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly said something else, but I stopped myself from saying it because I just thought, no, nah, <laughs> not doing that today. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to go and have a lovely barbecue <sighs> and we'll see you next time in our next episode. Yep. Bye, yeah. everybody. Bye.